Blender's particle system has typically been used in animations where numerous particles are in motion, but I'll show you how to use it as a 3D modeling tool and we'll use it to create alien terrain like this. And after you learn this technique, hopefully you'll think of other creative ways to use it. The terrain of many planets and moons is shaped at least in part by objects impacting their surface. We're going to be doing something similar by impacting our terrain with particles, but our setup will produce a large variation of shapes which will give us an interesting terrain. For this video, I'll be using Blender version 2.80. We'll start by adding a plane. So press Shift A and add a mesh plane. This will become our terrain. Now press Shift D to duplicate and move the duplicate up on the Z axis. This object will be the source of our particles. To add a particle system to it, switch to the Particles tab and click the plus button. We're going to keep all of the default values. So that the particles will affect the bottom plane, we're going to use Dynamic Paint. With Dynamic Paint, you define a brush and a canvas. In our case, the particles will be the brush and the bottom plane will be the canvas. To set this up, switch to the Physics tab and click Dynamic Paint. Change the type to Brush and click the Add Brush button. To make each particle act like a brush, change the Source Paint value to Particle System and then select the particle system that we just added. Then change the Effect Solid Radius value to 0.05 which will set the size of the brushes. We're going to set up the bottom plane to be a dynamic paint canvas so that the particle brushes will change its shape. But for this to work, we need to give this bottom plane a lot more geometry. So select the bottom plane, switch to the Modifiers tab, and add a Subdivision Surface Modifier. Set the Render and Viewport values to 9. If you try to set the values by clicking this arrow, it will stop when it reaches 6. So enter these values using your keyboard. A value of 9 will create a lot of geometry, but we'll be reducing it later. Now click the Simple button so that the plane will return to a square shape. Next, switch to the Physics tab and click Dynamic Paint. Make sure the type is set to Canvas and click the Add Canvas button. Then change the surface type to Waves so that each particle brush will create a wave. To put the particles in motion, I'm going to click the Play button. But before I do this, I need to save the project. I need to save it before I press the play button because Blender is going to save some cache files and this will tell Blender what directory to use. Now I'll click the play button. When I do this, the particles will fall and create waves when they hit the bottom plane. This will create our terrain and each frame will contain a different terrain. I'll let this run until it reaches about frame 50. Next, the terrain can be smoothed out by right clicking it and selecting Shade Smooth. Now you can step back through the timeline to find the terrain that you want to use. You can step the timeline back and forward using the left and right arrows on your keyboard, or you can drag it with the mouse like I'm doing. This one looks good. Since I may want to save this terrain to use in other projects, I'm going to apply the modifiers. So I'll switch to the Modifiers tab. The Subdivision Surface modifier needs to be applied first, and so I'll click Apply. Now I'll apply the Dynamic Paint modifier. I no longer need the top plane to generate particles, and so I'll select it and delete it. We're going to be adding a material to the terrain, but I'm going to set Blender to use the Cycles Render Engine first. Now for the material, select the terrain, switch to the Material tab, and click the New button. Make sure the principled shader is selected, and then set the roughness value to 1. To set up the rest of the material, switch to the Shading Workspace. To save time, I'm going to pause the video while I add the nodes. This is my node setup. I'm using a mix shader to combine two principled shaders. To control the mix shader, I'm using the pointiness output of a geometry node. This will allow the two principled shaders to be combined based on the curves in the mesh. These two math nodes are used to scale the pointiness output. Here is a close-up of the values that I used. These are the base colors that I'm using for the principled shaders. Here is a rendered image of the terrain after the lighting is set up. 
If I didn't use the pointiness value to mix the principled shaders, it would look like this. And again, with the pointiness values, it looks like this. These two nodes create a rocky look in appearance, and this node scales it. Feeding this into the displacement node and connecting the displacement node to the displacement input will give it the appearance of depth. This is a close-up of the values that I used. Here is the rendered image of the terrain again. If I didn't use the displacement, it would look like this. And again, with the displacement, it looks like this. Now I'll switch back to the layout workspace. To get the best look for the terrain, the lighting is important, and so I'll show you what I do. Start by pressing 7 on the number pad for top view. Then select the light source, press G to move, and drag it directly over the terrain. We're going to be creating some shadows, and this light will be used to fill in the shadows with a little light so that they're not completely black. Now press Shift D to duplicate and drag it off to one of the sides. Now press 3 on the number pad for right side view. Then press G and drag the light source down. This light source will create the shadows. Now switch to the Object Data tab to set the power of the light source. I'm using a point lamp with a power of 1000. Now select the other light source and set the power to 100. Next, I'm going to add an image of some stars to the background. To do that, switch to the World tab, click the small button next to the color, and select Environment Texture. Then click the Open button and select an image. To see what this looks like, I'll press Z and select Rendered. The last thing that we're going to do to the terrain is to reduce its geometry. To do that, select the terrain, switch to the Modifiers tab, and add a Decimate modifier. With Collapse selected, you can adjust the ratio value. Lowering this value reduces the geometry, but it also reduces the detail. I'm going to use a value of 0.3. Now the terrain is done. Here are some rendered images of this terrain from different vantage points. Well, that concludes this video. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe and leave a comment.